What's up everybody? If you use your imagination, it almost sounds like the real Game of Thrones theme music. I wish we had it because it's so iconic. But we're on a budget. We're on a beer budget and we have champagne taste, but we're back. We're back! This is it. This is part three of the poster design challenge. Welcome everybody to the Academy site of the future. Today I'm joined, as always, by Matthew and Jonah. What's yes, up, guys? Hey everybody, up, up? let's get to this. We we have to eat lunch, so this is gonna drive the pace of this final episode. Oh, second to final episode, I suppose. Ooh. This is the official Game of Thrones design challenge. This is part three in the three-part challenge, right? You guys were tasked with designing a minimalist poster thematically linked to the house of your choice. And Matthew's clearly laid out to three criteria. One, concept, two, composition. And three, integration of the sigil and the word mark. Remember, you're supposed to pick a house of your choice, one of the great houses of Westeros, and then you're going to design a poster around this. So let's take a look at your work. Let's just jump right into it, okay? Matthew, you ready to go? Yeah, I just want to make sure. We're we're live, right? We're, we're live. I think okay. we're live. Matthew has his ninja mask on. It's because he's I'm sick. the unsullied, man. <laughs> 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 okay, I just want to say this at the top of the show. If you have not seen seasons, what are, season eight, seven, season eight, season eight, six, the final episode, you may want to stop right now. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but I can't control what people submit, and there are some spoilers within the posters. I think, and if you don't read into it too much, you'll be okay. So I hope you stick around because we're going to critique these posters. A bunch of you submitted posters, and we're going to review a few of them, and then we're going to tell you the top five posters that Matthew and I picked to advance on to the final to see who wins the ultimate prize. When you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you, oh, you die. die. You die. <laughs> okay, we, are we live? Yeah, we're good we, live? Are, we are good. Okay, let's just jump in. Here we go. Here's the first entry. Who is this? This is for House Aaron. Can you read this? Is it Koli Mako? It is. Okay. Good eyes there. Good Eagle eyes. Eagle eyes. All right. <laughs> so this is for right House Aaron, I believe. <laughs> House Aaron. And they have a falcon and there's the moon door and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about what's working about this. I like that it's very minimal. It's high contrast. It's graphically just very interesting. They've got this Scarface split screen going on. Mm -hmm. That There's a black side and a white side. And the kind of yin yang thing going. Mm -hmm. I like those parts of it. What I don't like about it is that when you have this kind of composition, every time you have typography, it has to do that kind of reverse negative thing. And I just think that's not a great way to resolve how to integrate your typography. But when I'm thinking about conceptually, like, what does this tell me? So concept isn't that you have an idea to do something because that's just intent. That's not an idea. A concept to me is when A plus B equals C that it's a riddle for the viewer to kind of unpackage and solve and then there's a little bit of delight at the end so it has to have an element of surprise if you think about the amazon logo it looks like a little smile and most people get that but when you also see the placement of that little smile it's from a to z amazon so they sell everything from a to z you get that little bit of delight same thing with the fedex logo when you discover there's a white arrow hidden between some of the letters between the E and the X of FedEx, that's a little bit of delight. And that's what we're talking about when we say conceptually, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so conceptually, this is fairly flat. It's a good graphic execution. I don't love the topography that it's centered and it's just split in half like that. It's not really telling me anything new. As far as I'm concerned, this could just be a simple logo just scaled up. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I don't love it. Right. Matthew, your thoughts? Yeah, just the only things I would add to mm -hmm. this is that with the duality where you break the frame in half, it would be nice if there's, like you said, Chris, if there's something conceptual where you have something on one side and then maybe something revealed on the other side. Like if there's a play on the negative and positive space. Right now, there's not much of that going on. So right. unfortunately, that's a missed opportunity. The second part is because the black and white lines up on the middle R there, it's very hard to read that R now. So it, it creates some weird visual friction there right in the middle of the, the frame there. So yeah. those are two things that are problems with this. Let me tell you how you might want to use the split screen black and white contrasting thing. If you're trying to show that the person has two sides to them, like Matthew mentioned duality, like there's a split personality. There's a good side, the, the public facing thing, and then there's the negative side. So a great example would be a politician who appears to be 
like a really good person helping out with charities. Maybe they're doing a ribbon cutting ceremony. And then on the other side, they're like burying bodies in the backyard because they're mobsters. Mm -hmm. That's how you use that duality concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's keep moving on. Okay. Next up. Um, I can't read this because my eyesight's going. This is Lillian Figueroa. Yeah, Lillian Figueroa. Lillian Figueroa. This is a really nice image here. Let's just take a moment to take a look at it. Unfortunately, because you use a very light, creamy color background, that when you use our template, we can't, it's hard for us to make out the edges. So you guys just kind of stare at the screen and kind of visualize that there is an edge to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is for House Baratheon. Mm -hmm. They have the, the house the motto. The stag. Yeah. Now, ours is the Fury, and they have the stag. It's a good drawing. And inside of it, what is that? The person with the axe? Is that the the guy with the hammer? Because he's Baratheon? You know, I don't I don't know actually. I don't know who what the, is that? the character is. It looks like it's just a soldier with uh with horns on him. Okay. I was hoping that it would be I forget the dude's name now. The bastard's son. Oh, oh, right. He's uh, Baratheon, right? The last Baratheon. Yeah. Shoot. Well, some yeah. of you guys that are really smart will tell us what that is. Let's talk about what's good about this. I love that there's this large silhouette that draws my eye in. And I think you're doing this thing where the eye also lines up with the moon in the scene. And there's a really cool battle scene that's going on. And you can see that there's a moment of tension in, in the, the axe is being kind of brought back. And it's going to be released. And I like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's the sigil that you design and the logo type from the previous two challenges. So I like that. It's a good kind of design integration. It's working for me. Mm -hmm. I like that the the eye is the moon in the clouds there. That was a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. So right above the axe, there's a moon there, which is parting from the clouds. It's also the eye of the stag. Mm -hmm. I thought that's well lined up. So it's one of these nice kind of like a double exposure uh, image where these two things are lined up. So that's that's really nice. Uh, and people are confirming in the, the chat that this is supposedly Robert Baratheon. Oh, it's Robert Baratheon. Yeah. Okay. How do we know that? Robert's a big dude. Yeah. I, I'm not sure people He's got have a belly, more doesn't he? <laughs> they okay. say hammer and helmet are, are his. Hammer and helmet. Okay. Great. So, cool. So I like that. Thank you. Very smart internet. Our YouTube fans, our audience, they're very up to speed with this kind of stuff. So thank you for filling in the knowledge gaps there. Matthew mm -hmm. and I we're fans, but we're not that hardcore. Like we love the show, but we don't know every little bit. As apparently, <laughs> it's very apparent because we can't recall all the names. So Robert Baratheon, that's him. It must be an important battle scene. I, I guess I would like a little more clues as to what's going on so that I can get the secondary and tertiary read as you dive deeper, you discover more things. Stefan Bucher was on our show. He talked about how you want to build an Easter egg. So when you dive in deeper and deeper, you see more and more. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a very great way to reward the viewer by spending more time looking at your image mm -hmm. right I, yeah i want to say even the hierarchy is pretty nice on this because you have the baratheon at the bottom of the frame that's standing out mm -hmm. and then you have the stag that's reading as a big silhouette so if you squint your eyes that's probably one of the first things you read and then as you kind of go back into the frame you have the character robert baratheon in the mid ground with the black and then more and more steps behind that so i just want to say that the depth of this frame is really nice and there's a good use of uh, contrast coming all the way foreground going all the way back well done well done let's move on to the next one okay and you guys that are watching your show feel free to comment as we go so we know how you feel about it let us know if you like it what suggestions you might have if you disagree or agree with us just let us know mm -hmm. we can read the comments as you're as we're going along here okay next up this is oh my gosh ja Javron Ridney Rodney. Rodney. I don't know the first. I don't know how it to pronounce like it. It sounds like a Brazilian, like Portuguese name. Mm. Javron, like <laughs> Brazil. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> making it up. Okay. Game of Thrones is for House Aaron. The Moon Door, as high as honor. It's got a lot of components to it. Pretty interesting poster. We can see that they've rebuilt um, the Moon Door, which mm -hmm. is an integral part of their castle, mm -hmm. right? And then they have they have the House Sigil right in the center. I'm looking for another story element in here or the element of surprise mm -hmm. and let me let me explain what i mean by that so let's dive in here onto my ipad okay let's switch over to the ipad now you guys can see that okay let me move the mic a little bit so i i think here let me get this i think this is replicating this 
shape and it's not adding a whole lot to it. So I think mm -hmm. the way to go was to bring the sigil down here maybe mm -hmm. so that it's part of the poster but it's not the whole thing. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me undo all that so you guys can see what's going on. The next thing that I would suggest possibly doing in terms of double images, the moon door is really scary when the door is open mm -hmm. to show what's underneath, like it's really far away, what happens here, okay? Yes. I would suggest that. But another way to do this, I, I don't know what the meaning of it, but this would be your second kind of um, secondary read on it, which is what if this were an eye? Because hmm. they're so high up, they're kind of watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we don't know who the eye is. Maybe it's the person who who murders the the king. It could be from oh I don't know a snaky character in the show. <laughs> I, I can't say who that might be. You know, but we're looking for an additional idea or an, a, a component that makes it greater than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. That's what we're really talking about when we talk about adding an idea to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Matthew. Anything you want to add? No, I think there's. I would say, yeah, that's the central element there. So we want to make the most of that um, that area. Yeah. You could even have somebody kind of like falling back and that would have already been a little bit more interesting. Oh, that would be dope. Good yeah. suggestion there, Matt. Yeah. Um, I don't have the ability to scrub this part out and do that. But what Matthew's talking about is this. I'll draw it on the side. Let me switch colors here. So if it were a person like this falling backwards in space, let me just try to show you the lack of illustration skills that I may or may not have. Right. Right. So you, we draw somebody like that inside the moon door. Mm -hmm. And if you could imagine the moon door being much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, is it a round opening at the bottom of the moon door or is it a square? I don't recall off the top of okay, my Okay. Let's just do a circle right now. So we have that. And then you can indicate falling by little clues, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So it's a very centered perspective. And then you can crop into the poster it and do a little bit of the brickwork, hmm. the masonry work outside. Oh, that's I think fun. that would be pretty dope. It kind of feels a little like 007. Yeah. Little eye. So that's that could work. Matthew, great suggestion on your part there. That's why you're creative director here. That's why they I pay me it. the big books. That's why. That's why. He has to think on the fly. Good <laughs> job. Okay? So that's the suggestion there. That would be pretty cool. You know what I, I might even add is like this. A hand or somebody looking? <laughs> no, just like a forced perspective of a person Ooh. standing there looking down. Mm -hmm. It's like, what happened? We don't know. And I'd keep it silhouetted so that we don't know the whole story. Right. I love that. There, that's an alley-oop. So what I would do is if I could draw this again, I would scale the guy down much, much smaller. Right. Then down, down beneath, below, it's like a little river or something. We don't know. Right. Ooh. Now that has a lot of depth and power. Right? Mm -hmm. That's their famous thing, the moon door. Okay. Judgment. <laughs> yeah. And you could even have a brooch or something on the shoulder of somebody that has the sigil that you've designed to integrate in there. That's the little Easter egg. Mm. House Aaron, as high as honor. Look oh. how much tension is created now. Yeah. Ver Verdi in a uh, Verti? Uh, Vetri. Vetri in the chat is saying something like the Vertigo poster by Saul Bass. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Very powerful. Yeah. So do it in the same style that you're doing. The color palettes look. Uh, looks good and we know you know how to illustrate and, and make really interesting things just we're missing the story component what's the narrative aspect of this mm -hmm. and I think that could be really cool okay let's move on let's move on next up um, let's see who this is this is Fabian Krotzer okay Fabian is doing for house Targaryen I'm gonna have to guess because there's no house Targaryen on this poster <laughs> That's the first immediate problem. The second problem I see is that you've simplified the sigil from the house. I've not seen this in one of the entries, or maybe I have and I forgot about it, but it pretty closely resembles the existing sigil for the house. So in terms of like if this were a standalone, I like the sigil quite a lot. But in reference to what kind of departure or what kind of unique take you've you have made on the original logo. It's more of a modification as opposed to an original illustration. So I have issues with that. Mm -hmm. And we're really missing a story element and also the house logo type, the word mark and the sigil, unless that's the sigil that you've designed. Right. So really, we didn't want the post challenge to be just you taking the sigil and blowing it up and adding texture to it. Because mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have made a poster challenge to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And uh, Valer- uh, Valeria also points out that it's... Valeria, no Valeria, way. Valeria, yeah. No way. Valeria Flores. Okay. Or maybe I'm not rolling the R's enough, but uh, it's it's red on black, too. So the contrast there is very hard to read. So it is in this display. You just need mm-hmm. to up the luminance because red on black does work. It mm-hmm. does read. You just need to control the luminance. So the black needs to be blacker and the red needs to be a little bit more chroma and luminance. Right. That's it. It's tricky. It is a little tricky. It is kind of low contrast for us. Mm-hmm. Speaking of low contrast, let's look at the next one. Oh, this is from Adam Harris. Adam Harris. This one's kind of hard to see. Kind of like uh, The Longest Night, huh? Matthew, you're going to give me our time about that episode, huh? <laughs> the squint episode, as we call it, because you can see nothing. Everything's black and inky. My OLED TV was fine, man. I saw all the depth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Let's not derail the whole conversation. Teasing, sorry. Okay. No, that's no, all right. It's all right. So, again, I think this is for House Targaryen. I believe that's a dragon, and you can see a little bit of detail on the dragon's face. My suggestion here is I like the way that you lit up the eyes, and we can really spot the eyes, but having a little bit of that yellow and orange, the burnt umbers, kind of catching one edge of the face or rim light this dragon or something so that we can see a little bit more. I'm not saying you have to turn on all the lights in the room to show the dragon, but just give me a little bit more, okay? The other thing I'm not getting from this is what's the action? What's the dramatic question that's being asked? And I was asking myself that in the season finale. What were the dramatic questions being asked? And the answers, there weren't any, Mm -hmm. sadly. Season finale. Oh, my God. Series finale. Okay. So the dragon is there. House Targaryen. We're missing that. We're missing your sigil. We're missing lots of things here. I do like the illustration. I I wish it were lit a little bit more and it did something. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be... Oh, let's try. Let's try. Let's get back on the pad here. What if we had one of the hooks? One of the hooks. What the heck? It's not allowing me to draw now. Let me go back out. Let me hit play here and see if I can draw again. What if we had... Is it working? Oh, no. I I know why. Uh, It's user error. The hook of the claw, right? And Mm. something was on here. Maybe it's a drop of blood or it's a, a banner of a house tattered a little bit. So you can't totally tell what's going on, but there's a little story element to it, Matthew. Mm -hmm. I'm not really seeing much of the dragon in here, so I'm going to just highlight so people can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would love it. I love the idea that there's a foreground element. It'd be cool if it was a person, like the next victim that's about to get burned. Uh, In the foreground, it could be... uh, it could be the silhouette of a person and then maybe we could even open the mouth of the dragon or similar to how we've done with the eyes where that's a very bright focal point mm-hmm. you can have the brightness of the flames possibly coming from the mouth to also accentuate the the details that are there so you have uh some uh some source of lighting there to illuminate the scene and then you could even put something in the foreground like a character that's about to get burnt okay we could do that so we can fill this part in Mm-hmm. Right. Trying to do this with iPad here. Yeah. And, and, and then, Keynote, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, trying, you know. <laughs> Not too bad. And then there's a silhouette here. Right. Of something we don't know. It right. could be a battle pose. Like mm-hmm. this could be the golden golden company. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Uh, hard to see here, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. Just trying to sketch it out so you guys can see. So in the foreground we can see something happening, but we're not quite sure what it is just yet. Mm-hmm. Like will they what what I want to make sure is that we don't just tell the whole story that we're hinting at it, we're teasing at a scene or a moment, something that's really important. That only after completing the story in the series do you realize the meaning of the poster. You don't want to tell the whole thing. Because then there's no point of watching it. It doesn't become a teaser anymore. And you may get into some trouble with the show producers, the show runners. Here's mm-hmm. another thing that we can do. What if we took the eye and made it really big, Matthew? Right? That's cool. Okay, so then we're going to crop into it like mm-hmm. this. Okay? Let's crop into it. And then whatever the details of of the dragon are. And the reason why I'm not drawing the details, like what if instead of that slit, it was... A scene. The reflection. The yeah. reflection of something that's going Ooh, on. I like that. Right? We could do that. And then this could be smoke, smoldering, some cool things coming out. Maybe you can do something like that. Mm-hmm. That's what we're looking for, guys. That's what we mean when we say a concept, an image within the image, a secondary read. 
We got that. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Let's move on to the next poster. This is by... Excuse me. Hello. I can't read it. John Boulay? Johan. Boulay. Johan. Yeah. Boulay. Okay. His house for Targaryen. Have we seen this logo before? I feel like it's I new. You know, I think we've seen this one. Have I'm, we? I'm, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we've seen this. And what do we think about this, Matthew, while I'm working out my technical issues here? Hmm. I, I like the shapes in this poster. I can't quite make out everything in the poster yet, but I like that this is very graphical. Uh, you have all these nice shapes that are kind of coming out mm -hmm. from the center, kind of highlighting the sigil in the center. I, I'm guessing that that's the head of a dragon in the center, and those are horns, I think I know what possibly. It is. What do you think it is? Okay, there's a dragon in here somewhere. Are we inside the mouth of a dragon? Looking through at King's Landing? As his tongue is coming out, you know what I'm saying? Are we inside the mouth of the oh, dragon? Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Hmm. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. It's probably not. I'm just maybe giving the person more credit. I don't know, but it's that would be pretty cool though, right? Because that's a very unique perspective. So let me see if I can't help to make that clear. If that were the intent, okay? Right. So quickly, the word mark is really nice. I like it, Targaryen. I just don't think the shield, the sigil should be right smack dab in the center. It's like when we have an element like this, we don't know what to do with it, so we just center everything. Right. The entire layout is symmetrical. But I think it'd be really cool if you had the tongue here and this were the inside of the mouth, and mm -hmm. then you can see the teeth coming down. Oh my God. The teeth coming up. That would be so right? rad. <laughs> and then you see a very clear whatever King's Landing looks like with the, the red keep, mm -hmm. right? So instead of that, red keep it, yeah. and we just don't know what's going to happen. And then the scorpions are, are like aimed right back at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you could do that thing that they do in like movie posters, like a thousand arrows coming, mm. Ooh. right? That's Like black out the sky with the arrows, blot out the sky. That could be kind of nice. Yeah, people in the chat saying that would be dope. Dope. All right. Uh, oh. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. What else we got? This is now House Tyrell. House Tyrell. Jonah, who is that? Can you read that? Some is it getting Alex cropped Butler? off? Alex Butler. Yeah. This one got, got cropped got off for some cropped reason. Off a little bit. Let's just Okay. Alex Butler, you could read it? I think that's what it says. Okay. So House Tyrell, let's get back into House Tyrell. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a story element. I I'm, I'm going to try to do this as delicately as possible without spoiling this for anybody but i guess if you're a hardcore fan you you already kind of know what's going on so it looks like they're deciding who gets to become king hmm. so there's a person and they're they're kind of like weighing left and right this person become king or this person become king and it's kind of an important story element so important that i wonder why it's so small right so let's get back into it what if this were this big Right? Like House Tyrell gets to decide. And I see this green shape. What do you think this green shape is, Matthew? Is it just textural? I think it's just textural. I mean, it could be the rose. It could be a rose, but it's odd because it's green. Yeah. I do like it as an element. So even like if it it's too. even if it's just abstract, if it doesn't mean anything, I, I kind of like it. Well, I'd like to give it meaning. I'd like to give it meaning if I can. So what if this were... hands kind of coming together, like thinking about like plotting, mm -hmm. you know, like when you, you, you have a deep thought and you plot mm -hmm. Mr. Burns hands, Mr. Burns <laughs> hands. Is that what we're going to call this? Not movie? our Mr. Burns, the, the Simpsons, other Mr. Mr. Burns. Simpsons, Mr. Burns. <laughs> yes. Excellent. You know, it's like, who is this going to be? <laughs> Homer Simpson. <laughs> so there's an element in there and you can make it a little abstract. So it becomes a secondary or, th or tertiary read. Tertiary spelled T-I-E-R, I think, S-C-I-A or whatever, tertiary. <laughs> but it, it, it's not like the way you think it's spelled, right? House Tyrell, and then put the little emblem. Let me do a white here. Put the little emblem here, mm -hmm. and maybe the logo here, mm -hmm. and then whatever copy you want here. It doesn't have to be centered. Not everything has to be centered, you guys. Mm -hmm. We can get away from that, okay? 
But otherwise, I, th I think you ha you're onto something here. I'd love to see a little bit more of this. And it's so small that it can't read the type. And uh, I want to talk about this. When you're designing a poster, a movie poster, any kind of poster, you have to think, I've got to design this to be read from six feet away. So any kind of like little bit of type, it's almost like legal copy, the executive producers or whatever, that's really not that important. So if you want somebody to read it, you got to design it to be fewer words and much, much bigger because I can't read this. I'm getting old. Uh, I'm, I'm losing my <laughs> eyesight. I can't see far. I can't see near. So design it for old people and you'll be okay. Mr. Burns. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, this is from Boris Skowori. Skowroy. Skowron? Skowron? Yeah, ends with an N. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Skowron. Boris Skowron. Okay, this is for how stark winter is coming. The North never forgets. We see a fang and a sword through it, which would seem to indicate the killing of a beast. Mm -hmm. Which beast are we killing? Is it the wolf? Matthew? I, I think they were just trying to combine the two. Yeah. But what, what kind of animal is this? This is not a white. White don't have fangs like this, no, right? No, I think it's supposed to be a dire wolf fangs to yeah. represent the Stark house. And then this is the sword that was given to John. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't think that the sword was from the house. It is representational of John. Oh, it is. It's Iron Claw. Uh, Iron Claw was from the house Stark? No, no, it's not. I think he was given that sword, wasn't he? He was given it uh, in season one, I believe. Who gave it to him? Uh, the commander of the... The Night's the Watch? Night's Watch. The Lord Commander? Yeah, the Lord Commander. If the internet's going to roast us right now in three, <laughs> two, one. Well, we don't know our Game of Thrones history, but it's sword. But really, it, it seems so violent against the direwolf that it doesn't seem right. They work together. Right. Now, here's what I would do. Here's my suggestion here. First of all, get rid of the sword. So I'm going to try and black it out real quick. All right? Just imagine that we're blacked out. And then I would darken all this stuff because we don't want to see all that. We just want to see the fangs. Some of the other designers who worked on the project did a better job of learning how to light. And I think you should learn how to light as well. Mm -hmm. Like darken some parts. We don't need to see all the light doesn't need to be on. Pick a side, pick a direction. Like maybe it's lit from this side and then everything else could be dark. Mm -hmm. Now what I would do is I would put in, you know, the eyes of the wolf maybe. Right. So I'm not going to be able to draw wolf guys. Okay. And then maybe you can add the sword here, like two swords or something. So at least we're working together. I don't know. I just don't feel great about stabbing through these vampire war dire wolf teeth. It doesn't feel quite right. Right. Uh, if anything, I would add some crows in here maybe. They're often referred as crows from the wildlings. Mm -hmm. Crow, you know, your crow wife. <laughs> right? Your crow husband. Yeah. It's, okay. it's tricky. I do like the teeth, though, because that's pretty representational. But if you do have some a little bit of that silhouette or the eyes in there, yeah, I think that would be enough. Something. Something in there. Okay. Let's move on. Next up. Who is this by? This is by Ian Kelly. Okay. Who's this for, Matthew? I don't know. There's no house stated on there. There's no sigil. There's no, no sigil. house. We see a scene. The scene is well done. It's got nice atmospheric perspective going. Yeah. I think in the distance, there's a dire wolf. I think that's yeah. what that is. So I'm going to assume it's for House Stark. And I, I, I like the, the beginnings of this. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be much more interesting if it was House Stark Winter is coming and you saw the elements of a white or the undead army in the back. Right. I think that would be pretty cool. And I think you could embrace this whole... Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of shades of colors to work with, but if this were the white here and you could see them a little bit mm -hmm. emerging from the mist mm -hmm. and they're all like broken and jaggy like the, the undead army that they are so that we know that they've been warning about this thing, winter's coming and it's here. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. Something like that. And then we would just do Stark, right? And then do uh, winter's coming. Mm -hmm. I think... There's another element that you guys can use if you want to create a lot of depth. Matthew's very good at teaching this kind of stuff is you change the scale. So you have a really big tree, you have a medium tree, and you have really tiny little trees in the background. And you're getting pretty good at that, right? But if you were just to make some of the trees bigger or add foliage in the foreground that's much bigger scale, it would help to frame the shot a lot better, mm -hmm. right? 
So now we're looking in on all this stuff, right? Right. You could, if you're really, really good and very clever with this stuff, you could use the black that you have for the foreground to create another shape. Because the way you're yep. sketching this right now, it almost starts to feel like the shape of a dire wolf, like the, the, you know how it comes to a point there? Yep. You know, you could be very, very clever and very delicate in how you do that. So you might use the black there to create some shapes that, might resonate right. that second or third read of, of a dire wolf or something. Okay, you keep talking because I'm going to look up some reference here. Mm -hmm. uh, wolf head. Let's see what I got here. Wolf head. So I can sketch in that for you. Yeah, so let people know what I'm talking about. The other parts of this look really nice because there's a lot of detail in this one. I think compared to some of the other um, posters we looked at. Mm -hmm. I like that all the branches, there's so much detail in there. You have a good sense of atmosphere going very far back. It just has a great mood. It's just lacking a lot of story. And there, there could be more moments where you do get a little bit more clever and have more fun with this. Right. I found the reference. So let's say that there was something here and it started to indicate the nose of the wolf. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about, right, yes, Matthew? Yes, exactly. And over here you see a branch or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, right? my God. It's almost there. It's like This is Woo. the ear. There's an ear here. You guys are following me here? People on the internet? Yeah. Uh, I, I can, I, I'm trying to be careful not to draw too much of it. Right. So that it becomes like, oh my God, that's, that's what that is. So I think there's a definite line here that you want to straddle and you want to be careful about indicating it versus like, oh dude, come on. Right. No tree looks like that. Right. <laughs> so that, that could be like some foliage, a nest or something. And then that's the bottom of the nose and the, the right. mouth is somewhere in here. And we really want to play up the fact that these are the ears. So I might fill in this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the ears a little bit better. That's super cool. You know, one um, campaign or poster series that did this very well was uh, for the Batman series. Yep. Uh, I think it was the last one where you it was an upshot where you're looking up at the cityscape and it was made up of a bunch of uh, like either crumbling buildings or it's flying buildings. bats. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it created the, it right the, the, bat, uh, the bat symbol there. So that was a really good example where somebody had done this, where they're using this double read uh, in, in the image that was created. Yeah, I found it. Let me, let me switch over my monitor here so you guys can see what Matthew's talking about. Come on. I don't want to do software update. Not now. Not in the middle of a live stream. <laughs> Apple, relax. Okay, here we go. So here's the poster. I'll zoom in a little bit. So you guys can see that. That's what Matthew's talking about. There's buildings, and in the negative space, you see the Batman logo. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of planning that has to happen to, so that this reads correctly. There's another great poster. It's called, let me type it in, Cabin in the Woods poster. I think it's this one here. Is it? Isn't it this movie? could have swore it was this one with, with the trees and the skull <sighs> i know what you're talking about but i don't i don't know what's the name of the movie woods movie poster come on look like a doofus right now there it is cabin fever sorry look at cabin fever hmm. let me oh, let right. me, let me yeah. search for that a little bit better Ooh, that's cool have you seen that one before matthew yes uh Kaliam Early was saying the Ali Moss Darth Vader poster is similar to that idea as well. Yeah, so that's why we made that reference for you guys. Okay. Ooh, so cool. So cabin fever, the trees make up a skull, and there's a cabin in there, and some people see it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. Depends how dark your mind is, and my mind's pretty dark, I suppose. So I see it right away. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is from Michael Caleb Sabarte. Michael Caleb Zabarte. I assume this is for House Stark, but yeah. once again, I I don't know. There's no. I have to assume, right. Matthew. I don't like to assume. No so, word mark. who is this person? Who's the silhouette of? I think that's John. I see a little man bun and some fur on the shoulders. Yeah. Looks like his uh, silhouette, his profile. Uh huh. His, his beard and mustache, something there. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. And then it looks like the people that are in the middle of the frame are probably the Night's Watch or hit the band of people that he travels with in the later parts of the uh, series. Uh, who's the guy with the 
with the fire sword? I think it's Beric Dondarrion. Beric Dondarrion. The Lord of Light warriors, you know, so they're out. There, that was a really cool moment in the previous season, season seven, right? Mm -hmm. When they go out north of the wall and they're going to find, they're on a mission, I, I don't want to say. And it's like a band of brothers, um, a fellowship, if you will, mm -hmm. of the coolest people going out and trying to find something out north of the wall. Mm -hmm. So there you are. So he has a flaming sword, but that's not really John's role in there. So I really don't know what's going on, right. how it relates to House Stark. So cool element, image within an image. You see that there's dragon flying up there somewhere too. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it looks like they're... Oh, I know what this is. I know exactly what this is. This is the scene when the White Walkers are descending on that patch of mm -hmm. ice. You see the whites in the mm -hmm. foreground? I think that's what that is. Okay, yeah, I, I think see they're, that they're like coming in like a horde of zombies, and there's just one moment, and they're all getting ready for their final days on Earth. Yes. And then the dragon in the distance is going to maybe come and help. We don't know. Right. So I think there's a lot of storytelling going on. I just don't know if that's the best representation for how Stark. I love that scene myself. So kudos to you for that. It's a really well illustrated poster. I think we need to just refine the concept in mm -hmm. the moment, and we're missing some of the elements, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good job. Let's move on. Bill Dizalo. <coughs> Dizalo? Am I missing a syllable here? Jonah can read it. <laughs> Jonah, eagle eyes. I, I mean, that's the best pronunciation. I <laughs> D, it's D-Z-I-A-L-O. It could be that the D and the Z are like like Zylo. Z like you don't Zylo. pronounce the D. Zylo. Zylo. Well, whatever. Bill, you did a good job here. This is uh, for House Targaryen. Mm -hmm. Simple mark. You've got the sigil integrated into the bottom of it. That's like one of the first applications we've seen that because people don't know what to do with the sigil. And I think that's good integration. You get the whole fire and blood thing. A house mm -hmm. is fire and blood. You have Danny walking in on the battlefield. Uh, looks like a lot of fallen soldiers, spears, fire. And then you see what I assume to be Drogon. Right. It's nice asymmetrical composition, good use of colors. You're not going to overwhelm me with too much information. It says something. It's, it's kind of complete. Yeah, I love the color use in this too, because it has these nice magentas and purples in there, and then that orange fiery red to go with the fire and blood. So there's a lot of conceptual things, a lot of s stuff that I think you had noted that it's, it feels like a complete well thought out idea, and I'm a sucker for this color palette too. So yeah, lots of good depth going all the way back. You get some nice layers, first read with that dragon, and then second read with Danny there, man. Yeah. It's, it's great. I don't know what else to really add to this. Well, sometimes I'm going to try to mess it up, Matthew. Let's see if I can mess <laughs> it up. I feel an obligation to try to do something here. When I look at the silhouette of the dragon, I, I, there's creative interpretation and then there's being faithful to the source material. I'm not sure how faithful this dragon is, but let's just say it is. Mm -hmm. I feel like the neck is really thick. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel like this is the breast of the dra let me switch ink here mm -hmm. this is the breast of the dragon mm -hmm. so i feel like i want to cut this back a little bit so that there's a little negative shape and i could see a little of the wing and i don't mind that and then when you design the dress and all that stuff how it disappears into that so my eye wants to fill in what the rest of this image looks like mm -hmm. so i'm really thinking about silhouettes and shapes as a graphic designer mm -hmm. and that, that's all i'm thinking about okay but otherwise i think it's awesome so i can imagine that the wing Let's just say this, the rest of it is there and he's rearing back, you know, that's mm -hmm. it. Otherwise, I think it's an excellent poster. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. This is, oh, same person. It's going for a two for here. Yeah. Bill's doubling up his odds of winning something here. So this is another one from Bill and it's a really great illustration. So Bill, you must be an illustrator because this is pretty dope. True. Same logo, yeah. same, same, um, Sigil and everything. Okay, so let's talk about this. Matthew, what do you think about this poster? Uh, I, I think the illustration is phenomenal. I, I think it's so detailed. Very, very nice. Um, I think the last poster for me was more successful just because there's more there's more depth to it. There's a lot better contrast. And I, I just, I like that a little bit better. Where this one, I think the illustration is good. But in terms of... Uh, I guess what's here in the frame there's not much you know there's not like the second or third read in here that i really enjoyed with the previous poster and now that i'm looking at this i'm wondering if at first i was wondering like where did this circle come from and what does it mean 
But I remember in one of the episodes where you have the dragon kind of as a stri- uh, strategical moment, the dragon kind of flying in the sun, in the pathway of the sun. Shh. Careful, careful. I'm just saying. You yeah, know, yeah, to, I get to, it. To block the visibility, maybe that's where that uh, that w- that's where that shape is coming from. Uh huh. Okay, so I have a couple of things I want to talk about here. Sometimes when your design is close to being symmetrical, I just want it to be symmetrical, and I'm feeling that right now. I think it would be cool if you just went a little wider so that we got to see this part. So an equal amount of wing span on both sides and reframed it so that the poster is going to have to be a little bit bigger. So let's say it's down to here, right? A little bit taller so that you can get this sucker to be dead center. Mm. Okay. And then the circle lives wherever it lives. And if it's really a design element like the sun, I would just make it a little bit smaller. So he's coming out of the circle versus maybe the scale feels a little bit off to me. And then I think we want to do something a little bit more with the topography. It feels like it's, the, its only purpose is to fill a technical requirement, right? Hmm. So there's, I was driving down Lincoln towards um, Abbot Kinney in Venice, and I saw these movie posters from the new Godzilla movie. And there are four posters in mm-hmm. total. This one from Mothra. Ooh. See the symmetry of the uh, Mothra wings using a uh, duotone-like palette of turquoise, teals, and blues, the Godzilla. And then you see the three helicopters flying towards us. Gives us a really good sense of the scale. The great use of atmospheric perspective. This is the series here. So Rodan. And then, how do you say that? Ghidorah? The three-headed drag uh the three-headed monster so this is really cool as a campaign Hex, yeah yeah oh my gosh so nice right and then we have the one with godzilla who's a little bit different than everybody else because his is not symmetrical mm-hmm. because you know why because the spine of godzilla the electricity lighting it up in the sky mm. and then i like that they had an element for contrast a little person in the foreground or a jet so you really understand the scale of everything mm-hmm. right so if we take a lesson out of that, we, we could put in something small here so that we understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like the dragon's not that big, but let's just say it's like that. Right. Right. And then you can get a real sense like, oh, my God, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> right. And you can stack people in space. So uh, design tip for you is put in some element we recognize so we understand scale. Mm-hmm. There, there could be a boat here. Mm. This could be the sail like a boat sail here and it's massive right and then you see like oh my god it's coming right like this is the bow of the boat mm-hmm. i think there was a, a poster like that too like Tyrion standing on the bow of a boat okay that's cool good job let's move on dexter wanted to point out that that's yes? the red comet red comet i think it was in season two yeah season two yeah what is the red comet it, w- it appeared in the sky i think oh that's a, like a story element that yeah. the book fans know that the TV fans didn't really get much. Aren't really that smart info. about. It. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, let's move on. This is now Emery Duncan for House Stark. This is Ned Stark, Edward Stark, right? Yeah, I'm guessing it's Ned Stark. Yeah. And it looks like there's a double read here. I didn't see it at first, but it looks like there's small people oh, yeah. there at his throat. Oh snap! What do you, I can't see it from here? What do you What do you think that is, Chris? It looks like Joffrey, the Queen. And somebody with an execution blade and somebody kneeling to the ground. Oh. So I, I like these kinds of things, but unfortunately, I mean, that's like a really hidden element in there, right? Mm-hmm. That is slightly unnatural to the scene itself because it's not like hidden in the shadow. So the way that you do that is you light this thing a little bit more. Okay. So you have, sorry, you have black on here. So the lighting direction is going this way because that's the dark side, right? So I think if you were to hide a little bit more of this in the... I don't know. Something is not... Is it that the face has got too much detail or it feels like auto trace or something? Matthew, help me out. Uh, I think... Something is off. Yeah, I think the... Um, it looks like in the throat there, normally how it's been done in some of the previous examples that we've seen, people have utilized the idea of a silhouette or some kind of double exposure. The way that this one is executed right now, it's not using that silhouette, the the kind of the dark areas of, of uh, character, to create a second image on the inside. Instead, they illustrated a character on top of this, and it's kind of just put on top of the skin of this character's throat. Yeah. So, so it, the execution's a little funny, and it's it's a little confused, I think, in terms of 
I, I understand where this is coming from, but I don't think it was executed as well as some of the other ones that we've seen. Yeah, I think you're talking about using the natural shadows in a scene mm -hmm. and playing off that for the cool double exposure hidden thing versus a superimposition. Right. So I, I don't know what this image would be, and we got to find something where little shapes like this exist so mm -hmm. that it works. But it's, it, it feels a little forced yeah. in the throat. Mm -hmm. That's all. But maybe you're saying something about like how uh, honor and duty and what you say, what you do, there's <laughs> something there. Oh, I think there is something conceptual because the idea, what Ned Stark always taught everybody is that you uh, carry out the execution or what, what do you say? You carry out the, like if you... If you decide you carry out the execution. Right, yeah. Yeah. So there, there maybe there's something conceptual there. That's why there's a person kneeling over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot to read. And, and it's a lot of story to tell uh, that might be giving away more than it's supposed to. Right. Okay, let's move on. Next up is Wayne Lacuna. Hmm. Some really cool things here. House Targaryen, sigil, logotype. I'm liking the word mark. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the image within the image. So here's a big silhouette. There's a scene here. An army's getting destroyed or vanquished by one of the dragons. There's like, some cool little effects in it. For mm -hmm. some reason, for me personally, Matthew, the bright baby blue, the Tiffany blue, it's just really sending me to a different place. Yeah. It, and I think it's just really that. And it could just be as critical as choosing the right colors to complement this, right? Right. I mean, technically, blue is a complementary hue to orange. So I could see why that person might have chosen it. But I think because they're both equally saturated or it feels similarly saturated, they're fighting with each other. Where if you just picked a very light tan or a white, I think that this one would be so killer. But that blue is just, it's, it's You know what it me. is? I think it's the chroma, like the amount of saturation mm -hmm. that exists within the blue. It feels really artificial. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have this kind of old, mm. almost like a watercolor bleeding ink effect. And there's, there's a, a much more nuanced treatment to the image itself. If you had just done this on a darker background, mm -hmm. maybe a deep brown color or some other color, as long as it contrasts against mm -hmm. what is there. And contrast could just be value and doesn't have to be necessarily hue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what we're talking about, if I'm using the terms incorrectly, just refer to Greg's video on <laughs> understanding color theory, the Let's basics get of Greg it. in here. Yeah. <laughs> Gregory, what do you say? You know, he would tell us what's up. So Wayne Lacuna, I think a good idea, good composition. Uh, I just think the color's killing you on this. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to point out, again, I think there's some nice conceptual plays here with the tagline fire and blood. It's nice to have this bright orange on the inside to represent the fire and then the uh, watercolor or just kind of like the spotted liquid to represent the blood. So I think there was a, some very thoughtful elements that were put in here. That's why they were chosen there. So if only that color was not this baby blue, I think this would be so excellent. You know what I'm realizing, Matthew? Hmm. It's 122 and we need to do the rest of this in eight minutes so we can go eat. All right. All right. So we're, we're not going to spend as much time talking about the work as we have. I, I hope you guys don't feel short shrift or uh, what's short that? changed. Short changed. Yeah, that's because that, that expression that we do know. So let's get into it. Let's do this kind of quick. Our, our one of our favorite people, Kento Yoshida, is back at it again. Excellent illustration. Really Ooh. strong force perspective. Very graphic. Super powerful. Jon Snow is standing there and we know it's Jon Snow because it says Jon Snow up the front. The true heir, I, I think we're giving a little bit too much information away there. <laughs> I would just prefer Jon Snow Game of Thrones or House Stark. And then there's something about dragons coiled underneath on his feet. Beautiful composition. Maybe it needs to be cropped tighter. Cropped tighter. Mm -hmm. And then do something with Stark. Mm -hmm. Right? Jon Snow and don't give, away, don't give away anything. Okay? Let's keep moving. Matthew, why don't you take this one? This one... Uh Beautiful colors, sucker for these uh, this color palette. Uh, I think it's lacking a little bit of contrast. It's hard to read the silhouette in the middle of the frame. I wish that popped out a little bit more. So a little bit of the co uh, popping and con contrast. I think the silhouette of the three dragons, we don't necessarily need three dragons, even if you just had the one with wings, could also be very interesting to look at. And uh, unfortunately, this one is missing the sigil and the ward mark. But I think really good effort, some very nice details. It just needs to pop more and could be simplified in the silhouette. Yeah, for me, it's the resolution of the three dragons. It feels really strange, like it's like somewhere between cutout and illustrated. 
So it's like the, the neck is a little thin here, and just there's weird details here that are just a little odd for me. So just work on the silhouette itself and refine it a little bit. I think it's somebody in the pro group. I, I mentioned this, but nothing changed. So hmm. whatevs. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, this is from... Well, who, we didn't even say who this was from. This is from Sune Quist. Sune Quist, yeah. Okay. And then this one is up from Callum Early. Ooh. I like this a lot. Yeah, this one's Dang. very nice. This, I think, has a great sense of really big object, medium-sized object, and really tiny detail. So it has a very nice dynamic feel to it. You get the cool silhouette of... It's interesting, you could still read it as Danny, even mm -hmm. though it's front facing. Typically, when you do these silhouettes, you don't want to do it front facing because there's not enough uh, significant details on a person. Mm -hmm. Usually, you do a, a profile or three quarters because this is much easier to read on a person. But for whatever reason, this works. I, I kind of know that this is her. And I love the nice little placement of the uh, Iron Throne right at the center there, mm -hmm. uh, at the base of the Red Keep. And then the dragons flying in the sky. I mean, this thing is beautiful. It's a really good poster. I think some of this is a little uncomfortable for me. I think we need to go a little wider on it so that it doesn't see these little edges here. Yeah. We got to watch out for that stuff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm really enjoying this. I would refer the the house here, Targaryen mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we need season eight and all men must die, all of that stuff. I really like the throne, the backdrop, the three dragons, even though it might not exactly line up with the story. That's totally okay. 100% mm -hmm. okay, because it's really about the quest. Who's going to win the throne? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up. Uh, <laughs> from Bryant Seth Walker. A little uh, send-up here. Uh, calling out. Uh, this is almost like a meme poster, right. Matthew. So this might do really well on the internet in, in terms of making fun of the series. So the Starbucks controversy. Targaryen. Uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. I think this is pretty funny. Yeah. I think it's a little different than what we were looking for, personally. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just get real technical with you here. I want to talk about the steam. So I think when you design steam, you have to kind of pay close attention to the way the shape works. It should get thick and thin, and it, it swells here. Let me undo all that so you guys can see what I'm doing. This part, the shape here, it feels a little funny. I think a little refinement on that could work. Okay. Uh, I, I think you miss an opportunity here. Targaryen right here, man. Why not? Maybe we don't need this. Now <laughs> you, can, you can zoom into a little bit better. Yeah? No, that would have been perfect. Just bring the elements together. Yeah, that would have been perfect. That's it. Okay, let's keep moving. Good job, Brian. Funny uh, guy. Uh, Sylvian says, it's not Starbucks, it's Stargarian. Stargarian, Stargarian. <laughs> I have the venti Stargarian. Okay, this is by Jarek. Arpin, Jarek Arpin. Okay, House Greyjoy. Some really cool things happening here. Uh, and then there's some things we got to work out, okay? You see, when you have such an expressive word mark like this, it's hard to design around. So mm -hmm. this is a lesson for all you guys to design word marks that you just need to keep in mind that there's a whole context and applications you have to design for. When it's so intricate and so many elements, so many story bits to it, it fights against everything else. But let me talk about what's good about this. So what's good about this is that you see the Greyjoy, like the baddest pirate that ever sailed the seas. And then there's this double image here, and it looks like the Kraken, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like a giant squid. I think that's really cool. Uh, otherwise, the composition is a little flat for me. I think having other elements in here to show scale could help. Let me undo all that junk. Sorry, guys. Hang in there. See, because there's just this one horizon line, and then there's just one medium, and then one small. Mm -hmm. What if you had something much bigger in the foreground? Uh, it, it could be that this is the bottom of another boat. I, I don't know what happens with the composition, or it's sailing into a harbor. Something else needs to happen here. Maybe a little bit more lighting so that it's not the, the values don't separate. It's like dark on top of dark. Mm -hmm. And then Greyjoy, maybe that's white and much smaller. Uh, a little element here. You can add the stars. Mm. Ooh. To add a little pop to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, or you can add a little bit of fire on these other boats. Like, dude, <laughs> if you watch a series, oh my gosh, when you see that ship coming, uh, you run. Right. You just run. You just. I, I would just jump off the boat. Right. Like, yeah, ah! just jump in the boat. Boom, <laughs> you're done. And you can integrate your word mark, potentially, and and your sigil onto the masthead here or the mast. Mm -hmm. That would be kind of cool. 
Okay? And, and maybe you move the logo down here. Nice. There. That's it. Let's move on. Okay. Victor Leal. Victor Leal. The North remembers. There's the God's tree, the bleeding eyes, uh, the, the tree itself, and then it's integrated with a wolf. Thoughts, Matthew? Uh, I like the idea of yeah. using these things together, but I feel like the integration of the tree going into the wolf just doesn't, it doesn't feel like they're well put together. But I love the idea of it just using that negative space that's created by the, the red leaves of the tree. So I think what might have been more interesting is what we were exploring earlier, where we're trying to create that dire wolf shape out of the forest. Yeah. If we could have used this, uh, just have the red tree fill up the, the top of the frame, and then we could use, use branches to help illustrate the details of the, the dire wolf in there. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I think the dire wolf is really not that important of a character element here. Mm -hmm. it, it really isn't. So I, I think if you just made this all red, it would probably be a lot more powerful. We don't need the wolf at all. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have to fight to see the tree. Mm -hmm. Then something else could happen in the top part of this frame mm -hmm. or the bottom parts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it could be very, very beautiful. Red and white Ooh. on a stark background could be super powerful. I think we need to spend a little bit more time illustrating the tree itself because it looks a little clip mm -hmm. It looks a little like line drawing. So work on that. And I think you could have something really hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Wayne Lacuna, another one, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's multiple entries from Wayne. Where, where else is Wayne? I saw Wayne's name before, no? I think so. Okay, anyways, yeah, another cool. poster for the Targaryen, Fire and Blood. We have the Ice, the Ice King, I believe, in the bottom right corner. We have the three dragons, Danny's head and Rainy, and then little kind of bits of snow in there. For one thing, just I'm reading this purely on an aesthetic level. It feels a little too digital, too vector, clip uh, I, I think we need to spend a little bit more time working on the forms and, and how they're lit. Um, Things don't feel as integrated. It feels like elements placed on top of elements for me. Matthew, your take? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think if the, I think the intention was the dragons to feel more like the braids in her hair. It doesn't feel like it's reading very well. It doesn't feel like it's decided one way or the other. What I do like about this is that the night, the dark night, is kind of filling her silhouette and there's something quite nice about the juxtaposition of those two but i feel like it's so many story elements that are fighting against each other to try and tell us something here and i don't know what that is yeah and it doesn't seem like the the night king is like her battle to fight she's the battle for the throne right and this is like the north's battle to fight and so if you're going to pick an element uh, i think king's landing the the throne the iron throne something like that might make more sense Okay, mm -hmm. and last, last little warning here is like when you use a really bright saturated orange and a really bright saturated blue, it's screaming at you. Mm -hmm. I would push the chroma back down a little bit. Some, some, some of the saturation is just too heavy, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Another poster for the Targaryen house. This is from Jason Tucker. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is one of our favorite marks for Word Targaryen. Marks. Yeah. Word mark. Simple sigil, and it looks like that's Tyrion. No, I think that's supposed to be Danny, and that's that her braid. Yeah, I thought it was Tyrion at first because of the proportions. Yeah, but I think that's Danny, and that's the end of her hair coming off. That's not a oh, hand. Oh, I see. And then in the wake of the the battle, there it's a burnt, burnt city with the dragon flying away. So I see the wall's broken there. I see it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I get it now. So we have some confusion as to what the silhouette is. Just be mindful that you pick a really powerful, easily recognized silhouette so that the story elements are super clear. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, I, I, and I also feel like this one is also very digital looking. It feels a little bit like auto trace vector clip art. So be mindful of that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, Kyla Daly. This is a freshly made poster because this is straight out of the last, <laughs> last, uh, the last episode. episode. Yeah, uh, episode six of season eight. And uh, Danny standing at the top of the stairs with the unsullied and her devil-like wings spreading in the background. I won't say what what that all means. It feels a little vector, a little kind of just kind of missing a little bit of that pop, that cinematic quality to it. It feels very very flat. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of things that you can do to change that, and I'm going to show you right now. 
Matthew, is anything you want to say? No. I, okay. I think compositionally, while you're drawing that, like I yeah. think compositionally, it's interesting. I like that the weight is at the bottom and you have this expansive skyline in the background that's way in the back that you can read as you go up to Targaryen. But I feel like it's 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 just lacking a lot of details and some nice color and, and contrast. So what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you how to do the stairway. And so if you show the stairway, even though the same perspective, same angle, if you show an element like that's a person, and then you show more mm -hmm. people in the foreground that are bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. then it shows you that there's depth. It's mm -hmm. going back into space. And you can have the arch, and then you can have Danny standing there with the wings just like the way you have it. And you're not inherently changing the design. I'm trying not to change the design too much. Right. Okay? So you can create depth that way. Ooh. And it's really important for you guys to be able to do that. Right. And by doing things like this, it starts creating leading lines where it's it's moving your eye. So your eye is following now the repetition of objects, pointing you directly to the center, which is Danny. And then your eye will naturally go up to read the rest of the frame. So you can control things like this as a designer, as an illustrator. The way you compose frame dictates how somebody's eye moves across the frame. Mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody's been watching a little bit of, uh, what's that channel? With uh, Ted Sim. Oh, Indie Mogul? Indie Mogul, Leading Lines. <laughs> hey, did you watch that episode, Matthew? I did watch that there episode. There you go. I, I can hear it in your language, Leading <laughs> Lines. Okay. Next up, this is from Kento Yoshida. Again, the prolific Kento Yoshida, Let It Be Fear. That's a, that's a nod to a line that is said in, in the last season. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's some issues with this. I love the dragon, the face, and I love the red teeth. This is a great way to like really just draw some detail so that your eye just doesn't disappear into the into the void the oblivion right it's missing the sigil it, it, it could use another story element and let it be fear is way too big uh if you just made it a lot smaller it would it would work maybe on one line let it be fear mm -hmm. there's some typography things so kento is obviously a good illustrator maybe still needs to work on your typography skills there's too much lighting between the line let it be fear and it needs something else in here okay Otherwise, a, a nice composition, when you have a beautiful illustration to work with, it's, it's a lot nicer to start your design process that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Targaryen, this is from Anas Berakat. Yep. I can't totally tell what's going on here. It looks like three-headed dragon. It looks like a fireball and a web or maybe the wings of the dragon. Uh, it feels very Asian to me, which uh, isn't necessarily good nor bad, but it's just, I, I think, I'm going to just make one quick addition here. I think if you can make the wings a little bit more pronounced, I would just make all of this red. I don't think this teardrop fireball shape is really adding much. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay, like, look look at how much more powerful the silhouette's going to pop now. Right. Ooh. Yeah, much better. Okay. So what I would do is make the wings a lot bigger. So imagine that they were there. Mm-hmm. That could look pretty scary. Yeah. Right? And then you can move the type up, up top. Or whatever else is uh, the story element that you want to say. So it would need one more element in here to kind of complete a narrative thing. Mm -hmm. But at least then it would be very graphic. Right. And you're not just doing graphic on graphic. Because I think that was the problem here. The, this person probably got too clever. It's like, I'm going to add fire. I'm going to add this dragon. I'm going to superimpose them on top of each other. It's just hard to read. Yep. Whereas if you had just a big element, some medium elements, and some tiny elements, it would be a lot better so that your eye can kind of make a distinction between the two okay uh ooh, kendra will williford i think mm -hmm. that's a yeah kendra williford there's a lot of yeah. lines in that name <laughs> okay house bolton our blades are sharp this is a pretty cool poster i have to say the flayed man with the edges, uh, with the, the blades all over it. It's kind of an interesting way to integrate that. Mm -hmm. I just like having one strong element like this. Maybe the house Bolton could be shrunken down a little bit. It's a little bit big for me. Uh, I, I don't love that kind of Celtic lettering style, but that's not the challenge. The challenge was to design a poster with the word mark you design mm -hmm. and the sigil. I think this is quite nice. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I just like that instead of the bones there, you have the knife. So I thought that was a really nice... Uh, play on what you would commonly see there and that illustration detail is very very nice so I do like this one nice okay uh, House Tyrell from Agni Ag Agnieszka okay I'm not going to try the last name Agnieszka nice job 
it seems like you you really took to heart the whole landscape thing with uh, the one person in the in the background or in the foreground i'm sorry house tyrell uh this is where they they provide the food for the kingdom the seven kingdoms right not a lot of dramatic questions being asked here mm -hmm. beautiful depth in here and i like that this is one of the few that made a really big expansive landscape based off of the yep. references that you showed yep so i like the depth that you have the 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 grass in the extreme foreground in the med ground yep. you have this character and then the castle in the back so i think it's a great use of contrast and color but it you're right it doesn't i don't know if it adds any more like outside of that it's just a portrait of a scene yep okay let's keep going here uh, jess brown this is for house tully one of my favorite uh, sigils just super simple the fish kind of abstracted I don't know what the two rings are in the drop of blood. I'm pretty sure the fans of the show will tell us in a second what it means. From a pure graphic point of view, I like it. I just don't know what it means. It is almost like too reductive for me. Anything, Matthew? Yeah, I, I just don't know what to, to make of this. I, I wish I could read more into this or had okay. some context. So maybe the internet will tell us. How's Tully? What's going on? Uh, Game of Thrones, this is Adam Harris. Again, we don't know what house this is for. If you look really closely, this is a silhouette with a wolf in the hairline there. It almost looks like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart or something. It's just, right. it's a little bit off for me. It's hard to read who that is. It's a little hard to read. And, and this is one of those things where you're trying to get a double image in there and you're forcing it in because that shape isn't, I just don't feel like that shape is part of that person's face. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you've added in there. We're missing how stark. Uh, I, I would just work on the illustration a little bit more so that it's clear who this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is from Newton. And Newton's word mark here was one of my faves. Uh, did it win? This one? It it for did. It, it won the word mark. It did win the word mark? Yeah. Yeah, the word mark. Yeah. Not for the sigil. And mm -hmm. I think this is just the word mark and the sigil put together again with the sword maybe in there. I think. Right. So the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. That's what you're talking about. I don't think it's adding a whole lot for me personally. Right. Okay, let's move on. I'm trying to pick this up. Sharaf, The North Remembers, Game of Thrones, Missing House Stark. Illustration could use a lot of refinement. It looks, looks a little too cartoony for me, uh, a little too simplistic and reductive. I, I think if you're going to do a strong silhouette, you need to make sure that that reads like a really powerful dire wolf. It looks a little like a fox to me. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Ooh, Ian Kelly. Okay. Winter has come. So that looks like a night, a White Walker, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Looks like from season one. Yeah. Beautiful lighting. So we've, we've seen trees and forests and lighting. People who do this know how to light this. this is a great use of composition, big things, small things, and the lighting and the atmospheric perspective. That's really cool. How stark is there another story element? I don't know, but it actually is really well done. I like the drawing quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Ooh, who did this one? I don't know. No name. They didn't use the no template. name. <laughs> didn't use a template. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's some really cool things happening in here. This is a silhouette of the Night King, and the eyes and the tree line up really nicely. Yeah, it's a little so That's what Matthew's talking about, finding those nice alignments where it naturally exists, and then emerging from that forest towards the wall. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're missing a whole bunch of things. This isn't for House White. Right. <laughs> so what are we doing here? I don't know. Okay. Adam Harris. Uh, this must be for... The Grey Joys? The Grey Joys, yeah. It's a, a little bit hard to read. It's quite abstract. I think there's a boat in there, but much else I cannot figure out. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my hardest here. And, and if I try too hard, it means it's not clear. Okay? Mm -hmm. So work on that. I do like the colors. I like how expressive it is, but I can't tell what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's time for us, Matthew. Ooh, top To five. pick our top five. Top okay. five was pretty difficult to Ooh. choose, actually. There was top a lot five. of great entries. And there was a good amount of you, a third of you, who didn't fully follow the rules. So we had to weigh out three things, right? Yep. Uh, the uh, concept, the composition, and then the integration of the sigil and word mark. Okay. So that's how we rated these ones. Okay, so in no particular order, we're going to show you who our top five are for the third and final challenge, the poster design challenge for the Game of Thrones unofficial challenge here. Here's the first one. Ooh, I love that one. Ooh. Okay, so this is from Bill. Bill, great job. Yeah. Beautiful job. Okay, 
And uh, to no surprise, Bill's back in it again. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay, back another back. great poster. Oh, look at that. Jonah's saying he likes that. <laughs> it's a really nice poster, huh? Very well done. It's really beautiful illustration. We can see that you're you're flexing your illustration muscles. We like it. Good job. And then after that is Kendra with uh, House Bolton. We really like this composition. Very beautiful graphic. There's an unusual take on the House Bolton Flayed Man. Mm -hmm. The sword's integrated in there instead of the main arteries or the bones, as Matthew had pointed out. Mm -hmm. uh, second to last is Lillian Figueroa yeah. with her House Baratheon, the stag. How, uh, what's his name? Robert Baratheon, Baratheon yep. kind of just waging war with his hammer or his axe or something, probably hammer, and the eye, the double image, good colors, good composition, beautiful job. And last but not least is Callum with the, the Iron Throne, the Red Keep, the dragons, and Danny in the foreground, really missing that the, the word mark and the sigil, but other than that, really great design. Good job. Okay, that's it for us, you guys. Woo. Matthew, you'll tell them what they need to do. They need to vote up who their top choice is for the poster design challenge correct we'll, we'll tell you what the points are and then we will sum it up and announce the winner and send you your prizes so on behalf of matthew jonah myself and our hungry growling stomachs thank you and farewell game of thrones it's not it, it didn't end the way i hoped for it didn't pay off in the way i hoped for but that's the the name of the game that's the story of life <laughs> you don't get what you want see you guys next time adios matthew get us out of here with some music i think this died on me oh, oh.